Well, we're out here with John. John is a member of the channel on our DIY channel. John's gonna build his own deck. We're gonna come back to the site and finish up when he's finished up. Well, it looks like we got a rock there, Taylor. Holy cow, ta-da! I feel like a kid. I can't wait to go see this thing. <laughs> Dude, that looks awesome. That's a big rodent. Renovator one, bathroom nothing. Here's the secret weapon. Better to learn how to do this yourself. Look, look at the water damage here. Oh, this is where it gets interesting. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. Look at this. That is fantastic. This is not even four feet wide. Hey, welcome to Reality Renovation. Today we are out here in Carlton Place, Ontario, God's country. We're out away from the city, out with the retired Air Force. I never even asked, are you a pilot or a mechanic, an engineer? I was uh, what was called an air weapons controller. So okay. uh, a weapon would be a fighter aircraft. Right. So my crew and I would direct fighters in on targets. Uh, uh -huh. Very, very interesting gig. That's an interesting gig, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're out here with John. John is a member of the channel on our DIY channel. Home Renovision, and John, you got this project going on. You're doing a, you got a new house. You moved here to retire, I guess. Yep, yep. And the house is great inside, but the deck needed a little love. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll say. <laughs> it, it was, uh, I, I figure it was built around 91, and it was showing its age. There are a few daddy dues on the way it was built, but that's all right. You know, it, it lasted uh, 20 plus years, but it was time. We uh, had decided to, now was the time to take it down uh, and, and rebuild. And the ProPost guys that are going to be here later, I met at uh, the home show, the Ottawa home show a couple years ago, and I said, you know what, they're going to make my life easier. So yes, here we are. There you go. So it's kind of a perfect combination of do it yourself, but hiring professionals to do certain work. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, one of the most difficult things in the decking world is getting a good foundation. Exactly. Yeah. So most guys will do decks, where they'll, they'll do a ledger board, they'll do some floating posts, but you can't combine the two technology. If you're attached to the house, you've got to be attached deep in the ground. Right. So ProPost gives you that. Now, there is a DIY ProPost option. Have you seen that? They got uh, little mini green augers. Oh, is it? No, I haven't actually. No. Yeah, you just set it on the ground, you throw a two by four in it, and then you go for a really long walk. And you're the auger. Okay. And you spend about an hour walking in circles, trying not to throw up, putting this post in the ground. And it works great if your soil conditions are perfect. Right, yeah. We tried this deck a couple of years ago. In Carlton Place, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, but they did so much heavy backfill. They had trees and stumps and, uh, and big rocks. Yeah. And we kept on hitting things after about eight inches. And we're like, we couldn't drive that in. So that was really maddening. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that would be ideal for you because you're right up against the house. But. Yeah. Well, like I was saying earlier, uh, I, I'm pretty confident that we'll be okay. Yep. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm well, probably jinxing doing, it now. You're doing the dance around the septic tank, right? Exactly. But so you've that, dug it up. Yeah. You know where your lines are. Yeah. The I'm septic sure you'll tank be right. was uh, excavated years ago. Yes. So I'm thinking if there were any big rocks or, or things like that, they would have gone away then. Yeah. Touch wood. We'll see. Uh, but, you know, the excavating I've done so far, there, there hasn't been any, right. any issues yet. And I noticed you got pressure treated lumber. Yep. Now, this particular product, I checked the tag, it's rated for only above ground. Right. Right? Um, if you don't know this, be careful when you're shopping. If you're going to be putting a post in the dirt, it's got to be graded, rated for ground contact. A little, little sticker on the wood where you go shopping. Not every store carries rated for ground contact wood, so keep your eye out on that one. But you're doing this pressure treated. You're finishing, you mentioned your cedar? Red cedar. Uh, nice. Finishing up, um, again, with the... The way things are, that's on back order right now, but that's all right. <laughs> Everything's uh, a little slower now. Yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. retired, so <laughs> I can take all the time I want. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm not in a big rush, uh, but I want to do it right. I want to get it, uh, make yeah. sure it's it's okay. Uh, again, the little kids are around, and uh, you know, I don't want a deck right? falling. It's just uh, not the right time to try to save a hundred bucks. Is exactly. It? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So you got two by twelve lumber. You're going to have at least a triple beam. So I got a. I'm spanning a sixteen uh, foot. Uh, gap on the front beam. Okay. So by uh, by permit, it's um, four by uh, two by twelves. Yes. Are going to go across to span that gap. And the are you second using beam, a six by six post? Yeah. Saddle? Yeah. Is that how that works? Yeah. The the uh, pro post guys come with a saddle. They'll have so a they saddle. got a saddle that's made for a four layer. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. We'll post it up. 
Uh, I've got some uh, connectors uh, to grab the beam. Yep. Uh, the second beam, the center beam, will be uh, three by uh, two by ten. Okay. All right. Uh, just just to span the joist and then twelve foot uh, joist. It's pretty simple. Okay. Yeah. You know? Pretty simple. Going sixteen feet that way. Yes. Uh, so it, it it like I say, it, it, it's not. <laughs> It's not that hard, uh, but uh, it's going to do what we want it to do. I'm, I'm pretty sure. There you go. And, and man, this is beautiful, dude. You got a fire pit. Yeah, a little fire pit. Wow, look at you, John. All the amenities. Living the dream, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, John, for having us out today. Appreciate you reaching out. This is a great little project. We're going to really enjoy watching the ProPost guys do their job, and we can talk to them in just a few minutes when they get here, and they can discuss their technology and why it's such an affordable alternative option than digging huge holes. Now John has actually contacted the ProPost to come out here. He's doing a deck job. And we're doing a DIY video today because sometimes doing it yourself means make a good phone call. Let's face it, if you're going to do a deck, you've only got two options. You can build a floating deck, it doesn't perform as well long term, or you can go dig in the ground. Now traditional digging means that you've got to put a hole in the ground, sonnet tube, concrete, all that work, all that sweat. But in our area, the building codes changed. Now we can't just put a single hole down there. We can't just auger out a hole. We've actually got to excavate a huge area and put in that great big black Bigfoot plastic thing in the ground to add the sonnet tube to, backfill, compression. It's an incredible amount of work. And so if it's going to be a structural issue, you're going to be hiring a pro. So today we're here because Taylor is a pro. <laughs> Taylor's got a new technology. I call it new. It's been around, what, 25 years? Yeah. All right. But the point is this. In the world of building, if it's less than 50 years old, it's new, <laughs> right? Now, he's going to be out here for about an hour and a half. He's going to do all the footings for the deck. He's not going to disturb the soil. You're going to be less expensive than uh, yep. the traditional. And John doesn't have to break his back yep. or his budget. Let's get into this. <laughs> is going to make sure that water doesn't want to run down that post because you could actually cause the water to irrigate and wash it all away. Yeah. And now your skin friction's gone. Yeah. Right? And now you've got water in the hole which has got now access to the cold air in freeze thaw cycle yeah. and you can heave it right out. Yeah. And if he gets to 4 feet and hits a rock, he'll stop there if he's got enough friction. Oh, great. It yeah. mm -hmm. needs to torque. Right? And then if you get water, that would irrigate that situation at that level, right? So I was in a house, uh, they had the posts on the corners, and they put on eaves trough. Didn't have a pipe running away from the house. So it went right to the corner. And then they had a dirt berm in front of that from the excavation process. Nobody took the time to go and put the dirt back and get sloped from the house. So all the water on the eaves trough went straight to that pipe, washed it out, winter came, but now he also had freeze thought cycle, so it was full of water and it froze and lifted the whole corner of the house. That's what I measured out for these guys. Six yeah. feet, five, eight, seven, nine, whatever it is across. It's an interesting that, location of that tank for the house. Yeah. Well, and, it, and when I'm trying to square it off, the, the tank is offset. You yeah, know what it I'll is, right? It's like, mm. Somebody brought that in on the crane. 
and he's working by himself. Yeah. And there's a little breeze. <laughs> and he's Close. like, oh, it'll work. The pipe Close can enough. fit. Boom. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Close <laughs> enough. Yeah. So, anyways, we worked around it, and again, the permit guys were really great in yep. in uh, helping me figure that out. And there's uh, uh, there's the engineering drawing of, of what you're getting. Yep. So, right. In, in and this is all your permit engineering from these guys here. Right. Yeah. This is our engineer so, report that we sent. Right. Like I said, I sent my plan in. They did, sent this. I sent this with my plan to the permit guys. Yes. Stamp. Yeah, they Everybody don't have an set. issue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All done. So as far as structure is concerned, it's out of their hands. Yep. Now, what about your city dealing with your railings? Do they give you like approved drawing yeah, styles? Yeah, have. And... Uh, they have a whole package. Yeah. Uh, already done uh, that tells me what we have to do. Right. Uh, and I will comply, and we'll go from there. Or <laughs> you have an option if you want to be more creative, because usually the pre-approved designs. Aren't always the most attractive. Right. Um, you can come up with almost any design you like and get your structural engineer to stamp it. Right. And say, yeah, that makes sense, go ahead. Yeah. And then now the railings are out of the city's hands too. So I just hit a big boulder. I worked my way around it. Now I'm running into another one, so we'll see. There I go, I got past that one as well. Well, it looks like we got a rock there, Taylor. Yeah, oh, it's a big one. I heard it. So you try this first. How, how deep down is it? The, the rock? Yeah. Uh, right about there. <laughs> uh -huh. I try this first by hand and then uh, if need be. Then you can spin the, everything around. Take and the big guns out. <laughs> is there anything I can do to help you out? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, huge. Looks like I'm gonna be digging. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Ah, uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. But this is this is part of the reality. I mean, yeah. the fact is, is if you were at home and you're trying to dig this hole yourself and you run into this rock, then what do you do? You gotta go and rent a backhoe? Like, Some, sometimes <laughs> you hit concrete blocks. Uh, sure, oh, sure, yeah, sure. Old septic fields, uh, whatever. You yeah. Gotta, you gotta work around it. <laughs> man, oh man. All right, so I'm gonna go get the backhoe and get this big rock out of the way. Decoration now, eh? 
So you just slide it in like that and you're ready to go. Thanks for all the work today, Taylor. My pleasure. A couple of hours, you're done. Five posts, plus one of the worst rocks you've had to deal with in a long time. <laughs> yeah. That's not bad. Listen, when we get back after the break, we're going to be taking a look at the finished job. John's going to build his own deck. We're going to come back to the site and finish up when he's finished up. Hopefully, he'll be done sooner than later so he can enjoy the summer out there. See you in a bit. All right. Well, we're back at John's place today. Hey, John. Hey, Jeff. Looking forward to seeing the deck. Dude, I'm excited to see what you got going on here. Any problem with the permit inspection no, process? No, uh, we, we passed with flying colors, I think. Uh, the guy came in twice. He looked at the uh, you know the heavy structural stuff, and then yeah, he yeah. came in and looked at the finished product. You know, there were a couple of comments, but they were valid, and uh, we fixed them all up. So. Nice. Yeah. That'll make it easier to sell. Uh, one day down that's, the road. that's what I'm thinking, man. And I'm in the fourth quarter. Well, you still look young, though. It's got to last 50 you know, years before exactly, you worry about that. You know? All right. Uh, well, I'm excited. I want to just get back and take a look. Um, okay. I'm thinking one, I want to take a look at the project, give you an idea of, you know, as far as uh, like, man, let's do a score out of 10 as a homeowner. And then compare that to a contractor's job. All right, to give you sure. an idea of where you landed. Sure, yeah, I'd love to know. I really would. Because, you know, this could be interesting for a lot of people. You might not hear what you think you're going to hear. Okay, <laughs> come on back. Wow. I'm, I feel like a kid. I can't wait to go see this thing. <laughs> Dude, that looks awesome. Well, we're, wow. we're pretty pleased. Mama Bear's happy, so, you know, I'm kind of happy, but there's some flaws, but uh, just a couple rookie mistakes. My uh, fine carpentry skills aren't. The fine carpentry <laughs> skills aren't fine? But, uh, you know, that's the little black covers around the posts and all that kind of stuff. All right, so there's the piles. Did you have to make any other adjustments after we were done that day? No. No? Um, uh, sorry, yeah, we did. Um, the posts weren't cut flush, right? So when we were, oh, okay. when we were mounting the six by sixes on them, uh, Right down here. You were noticing that there was a, a, a yeah. pressure point. That things yeah, were twisted. so this, it, it'd be like on one little point rather than the whole 360. Right, right, right. So we trimmed them down a little bit. That um, just makes, I can understand how that in, you know, in the back of your head, that would be like, that just makes more sense. And, you know, until everything's built and tied together, you know, you put the post up while it's wobbling all around. It's like, well, yeah. you know, so uh, we, we trimmed those up a little bit and that was fine. And then uh, threw everything up. Uh, creative use of ratchet straps to hold the uh, supports in while you drill them in and all that kind of stuff. Okay. We're, we're really okay. Good. Yeah, oh, yeah. So you've got lateral support and all of these details were given to you by the engineer from the, the post company or did you draw this up from someone and send it to them for approval? Uh, so the post layout uh, was engineered by the ProPost guys and they sent uh, that in and I sent that with my drawings for the deck. Yes. Uh, to the inspectors, to the permit guys. Okay. And they, they approved it all. Okay. Uh, one of the discussions we had was, uh, you know, that's four, two by 12, right? Yeah. Four ply, two by 12. Uh, but that was only because we're spanning a 16 uh, foot gray, uh, length. Yeah. The, the septic system was much larger than I thought. Yeah. I, uh, oh yeah, the tanks underneath. Right, I dug it out. Right. So, uh, they said, okay, for, for 16 feet, you have to go two by 12. Okay, yeah. we did that. And then the middle one is um, two by 10, three ply. Okay, right? yep. Um, it, it was a little wobbly when I first uh, put it together. It always so, is until you start screwing it all in. Yeah, it. and it's then amazing. I put these in. These are held by uh, 
eight inch structural screws and then five inch structural screws yes both ways put those in after i uh, cranked them in with the ratchet strap solid and yeah. now like i say you can land a chopper on it right it's not going anywhere <laughs> that is really good the, really uh, something i don't know if you find interesting so i was worried about the stairway yeah. And how I was going to mount the stairway because, it, you know, I just didn't want to come off the joist. I thought, ah. So YouTube and uh, a bunch of other folks like yourself, not unlike yourself, well, do an inside mount. So right. we, we cut the stringer. This last step, we cut just a little longer, another inch and a half to, to take this joist. To give you right? that. So we're mounted here and we're mounted on the second joist at the top. Yep. And then uh, I plated all the stringers with uh, two by 12, or uh, actually uh, two by eight. Yeah, lots of blocking in there. Eh? Plated all three, so it's solid. It's, uh, again, it's, it's solid as a rock. Yep. Uh, and it's not going anywhere. I, he was very, very pleased. The inspector was very, very pleased with it. Yeah. So, no, and, no, no doubt. and it worked out quite well. We were, you know, uh, we ended up taking one of those uh, stairway calculators, right, right, to figure out the rise and the run. Yep. And, you know, basically 70 by 70 divided by 10, boom, pretty easy, right? So oh, you, you, you did yourself a really nice 45 then. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's 7.1 inch uh, yeah. on the rise. Okay. And, you know, we had to do something too because the last one was mounted here uh, on this rock. On that rock. But I came this way six inches with the deck. Right. And that kind of pushed us out. And, you know, it would have been way too steep to use the step. Plus, it would have been an off you kind of come off the step and then off another rock step. So we just said, forget it. We'll just go all the way out. 70 by 70, too easy. Worked out pretty well. And that's all blocked. Those are carriage bolts or lags? Yeah, those are uh, lag bolts. Lags, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why I did that. I should have been consistent and went with the uh, structural screws like I did everywhere. That's no, okay. But eh, it, it works. Not you know? an issue. And that, that's all blocked down there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the whole uh, structure on the first step is cleated to the uh, to the stones. Okay. This is uh, eh, you know it's probably overkill. Uh, and so for the second post, again there's discussion about outside or inside, uh, and it just happened that well the way we designed it was going outside. Sure. So we did that. I had mounted the post uh, just through all the blocking. Again, this is blocked by two by twelves that way. It's double blocked this way, but we'd put the single post in and glued it yep and after a couple of days you know it was just it did didn't have the strength i thought it should have yep so two more blocks uh screwed in this way one screwed this way and one screwed that way it, i mean it's not going anywhere right, right. and i'm happy so right. i could have probably trimmed it 45 and eh, you know the only uh, way to get a better design end is to go with the wider stairs and get the post inside right, exactly yeah, right yeah so that's what we did with these posts. Sure. These are all uh, uh, blocked four ways, and they're all screwed okay. uh, each way. And and I see you got base plate covers that cover the the gaps from the saw work because there's going to be gaps when you're on an angle, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. That's those are to cover my uh, my fine fine carpentry skills. That was an after fact thought, yeah. Which aren't fine, but you know, <laughs> but it works. It worked okay. And I mean, I uh, again rookie mistakes. You know, you I'm, I'm trying to visualize the cut to make using the angle and right. I make a cut. And, oh, that was dumb. So then I graduated to uh, making templates out of short pieces of uh, uh, deck board. Sure. And then at one point, uh, I just, I don't know if I was tired or whatever, I, I got a piece of paper out and I took measurements and I drew the whole thing and then I transferred that to a board and it came out all right. Yeah. But yeah. just, you know, not having done it enough to be proficient at it, but you know, put an inch block thing over there and everything's fine, you know, so I'm happy. It worked out pretty good. There you go. The the. The spindles. Uh, I was going to ask you about this. Your handrail system here. Yeah. Did you mill this yourself? No, no, that was uh, store where bought. You, where did you get that? Uh, that came from um, Bytown Lumber, just around the corner. Okay. So it's uh, pressure treated, not cedar. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just that we have um, in the videos we've done, we've we've seen the spindle kits. Right. Um, there's a few different companies doing this, and you know, for everybody who's asking, I usually just go to the Home Depot. It's, they have the stairs and the regular. Yeah. And generally speaking, they have the two by fours with the pre-drilled holes, but this year the inventory is brutal. Yeah, is that right? They don't have it in cedar. Oh, okay. And so what I'm doing is I just bought one pressure treated, ran it through the table saw, right, 
So now I just clamp on the template with the holes, put my bit that's the right size, right. and then I just finish drilling into the wood that I want. Okay. So it's a great cheat. Um, you the, don't want to do this kind of work freehand because then your spindles will be all over the place, right? I, the company, no relation to them, but the company that does these are called Nouveau Iron. Okay. Uh, and they come in the kits. It comes with the spindles. Nice. The, yeah, no, the, I love the, the details. Uh, this get, is great. You get the, uh, the uh, support they system They got the brackets there. that go with the it. The brackets, yeah. yeah. Uh, but again, thanks to you on how to get this right, where you take the measurement here, uh, you take the other one, you put it nose to nose, flip it over and draw the line. Yeah. Brilliant. Man, it, it, it helps line everything uh, up. Piece right? of cake. And, you know, well, pretty good. It is really close yeah. to perfect. Yeah. I mean, and it's tough with a wood structure because one day oh, the posts are like this, the next day they're yeah, like this. And boy. <laughs> and, and these things, you know, they're, they're bowed. Yeah. I, I actually had to take one in. Uh, one back because okay. it, it was twisted, you know, like about an inch and a half. Yeah. And I said, guys, I mean, I can't do anything. But they were, they were great about it. Sometimes, no problem, uh, you know, someone will return one and it'll get back into the cycle. Yeah. And they get sold out again. Yeah. And now it's been drying around for a couple of weeks and not bundled together. Yeah. Um, yeah. So essentially, they came, these things came in six foot kits. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, nine, I think, about, or 11 of them. All right. So, so the structure is solid as a rock. Yeah, it's not going anywhere, right? I don't right, think. Let's get up on top and sure. have a look at the, the finish. Because ultimately, you don't build a deck to sit underneath it. <laughs> right? It's funny because the code where we live is the 2 by 4 on the vertical. And if you hold on to that, you're really relying on the strength of your wrist to carry your body weight if you make a misstep or you have an issue. And generally speaking, you know, you're already, most people that have an issue with stairs, are already at a point where they, can't, they don't have any strength left in their hand. They can't hold themselves up if they miss a step. But if you've got this overlapped, you can curl your whole hand around there. For everybody who commented on our other videos, watch this. My elbow's on here. Now I can, I'm using the whole upper body to go up that stair. I mean, I could make that stair drunk with one leg. <laughs> So you've got a great space up here, diagonal boards, camo screwed, yes, sir. not surface screwed. Nope. Solid and too. These are five quarter on 16 inch center. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And there's no weak spot with uh, that. Actually. <laughs> are you tighter so, than that? So sorry. sorry. Um, uh, I was, I tried 16, but you remember there's a vent that yes. comes through the ledger board. That became so, a problem. Okay. So it was, we tried 16, ah, that didn't work. Then we tried 12, well that didn't work either. Uh, so it ended up being 14.7. And guess what? Works good. You know what? <laughs> the funny thing is, is you can use any combination up to 16. You can even change the width. Right. Because you're not surface screwing. Exactly. So nobody would see anyway. E yeah, exactly. So the camel screw gives you that kind of flexibility. If you've got to work around details or issues, oh, that's just awesome. So you got the great drink ledge. You took the time to sand the edges. Well, again, that was just, you know, uh, you know talk about details. workflow and stuff. Uh, you know, I got most of the... Well, I didn't do that one, but I did that one, getting them the right way so they wouldn't curl up. Most yeah. of the deck is that way, but it was workflow. You know, I was concentrating on getting the measurement right and yeah. the, the length right and cutting it right. And then the last thing I would do is look did, did where I the do curve this right curve? Yeah. Oh, it's upside down, but oh well, good enough. You it's know? funny, we just started filming a, a new deck series. We're teaching about the, the young softwood lumber. And what we did is we, we drew the grains on the end of it. Okay, right. So that you, people can see with a black marker. Yeah, yeah. And then take a look at the different sides of the board. And which one do you prefer? And there really is no rule anymore. Yeah. And, you know, you can see that on our other channel. I'm going to put a, maybe a card linked to that one up here. That would make sense. Now, uh, let's talk about your craftsmanship. Score you out of 10 as a homeowner. Sure. I'm you ready fine. for this? Yeah, I am, actually. I'm going to give shivers. you a nine and a half, John. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow, that's and an I'll honor coming from you, The man. only thing that I see here is the distance in the diagonal from that corner to this corner. And in hindsight, you probably would have done the same thing. Because as soon as you put the mat down, you probably said to yourself, oh, I could have cut measurement board and put all the cuts in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh, but to, that's just an experience issue, isn't it? It is. And to be quite honest with you, you know, I, I uh, had a, a lot of stock. Uh, the reason I went diagonal is I was out of square. Okay. And it hides a multitude of, multitude of sins. It, it it does. Yeah. And it, so I went on the diagonal. My wife likes it that way too. Yeah, yeah, so, no, it's um, pretty it's good. It, it adds a nice um, dimension, nice texture. Yep. And and you know what? With hindsight, yeah. And uh, 
that goes back to workflow and understanding, you know, do you cut all the boards first and then play with them? Or do you, you know, I did one at a time, rather tedious up and down stairs, but right. I can use the exercise. Uh, but generally, I'm, I'm happy with the way it came out. And, and you know, it's a lot of your tips, um, using the camo screws for like right here and along the edge of the, the vinyl there. Yep. Uh, burn them in. Uh, backwards, screw them in. No splits. And no splits, and they're starting to disappear, uh, you know, yeah, as advertised. It, you if know? it rains a couple of times, they'll be gone. Yeah. <laughs> if we, we get it's been weeks. Yeah. 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 But that's fine. But you know, that's an interesting point because um, as a homeowner, if you don't build square, right, that big lumber, that's expensive stuff. Yeah. Usually you get it delivered. Yeah. So if you make a mistake cutting and you're like a half an inch off or something, yeah. now you're going to have an issue potentially with yeah. the finish. Yeah. So put things on a diagonal, it saves your bacon. Yeah. Now, here's my one secret that I got. If you ever go build a deck for one of your friends, <laughs> when you're doing this, sometimes it's easier to lay the boards out. Okay. Okay, and then put the post over top of it, because you can see the framework underneath, uh, and then trace it. Well, that's an idea. Take the boards yeah. off yeah. in order, Attach the post, cut them, and then install. You're right there. And you yeah. can go one at a time. Yeah, yeah. Ah, and, and, okay. and that'll make all your cuts perfect, so you don't have to go buy the black caps next time. Yeah. But you know what? Great move. They were buck eighty-nine. No one would even know that it wasn't yeah. intentional, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it's brilliant. You know, it's interesting stuff too. The you know the the uh, camo system has a three sixteenth uh, gap. Yep. Uh, some of the boards will take a three sixteenth, and some will not. You know, and I again, I used your your pry method the levers, to yeah. lever them in some of them. Yeah, but you'll notice that some of them, uh, okay, call it a quarter inch. And anybody who gets on a deck and wants to judge someone for the variation in gap, build just, a deck. Just, just shut up, <laughs> go away. Build your own deck. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, yeah. we're dealing with soft wood lumber and it's young trees. Yeah. Right. You're really gonna be an uphill battle. Yeah. To try to pick the perfect wood, get it installed perfect. Let it dry and shrink perfect. Oh, yeah. brand new world, right? Yeah. So the idea is, the quality of the deck is in a how comfortable do you feel up here, yeah. right? It's like when you lean on the rail. Did you like? Do you take a step back and like? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Really, it's all about you know that that picture postcard snapshot, right? Yeah. Don't walk around with a fine tooth comb trying to judge yourself. Yeah. It's not fair, because I'll tell you right now. Um, your structure is stronger than any contractor I know is going to make because they're all going to scale it back, yeah. okay? Um, they're going to go to minimum code, right. which means they're not going to reinforce your stair railing, right? right. And right. it's going to be wobbly and it's going to be past inspection, yeah. where yeah. yours is solid as a rock. So you're actually exceeded the quality of a contractor. Well, I know. I'm you're, happy. You're, you're sitting there thinking, what? <laughs> yeah. This isn't TV land, yeah. right? Most people can never afford a quality carpenter to come in and actually build a deck with, with years of experience as a carpenter. Right. They're going to get a deck company. It's going to be a bunch of guys in their early and mid-20s yeah. who know how to use basic tools, have got a few formulas for construction, know how to pare it down to meet minimum code, and they're going to slap it together. And every time there's a little problem, they're going to say, that's acceptable, it's normal, it's... Right? right? It's usual. Yeah. And, well, it's, and it, it, it's upsetting. You know, we're retired, uh, uh, limited income. I mean, we're doing okay. It's not a sad story by a stretch. But, <laughs> you know, to double the cost at least. Yeah. You know, I mean, the rule of thumb, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but basically, you know, in the old twice days, the number of your. Of in your the old hardware. days before the governments were broke. Yeah. And they used to, <laughs> we, we used to have kind of like a rule of thumb. You take your material cost and then double it and it covers your labor. Right. But nowadays, um, business is getting too expensive. So now it's almost triple. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because well, there's such a huge chunk going to the government off the, back, yeah, off the top. Yeah. So For us, you know, it took me a little time. Great. It was a great experience. And it gave us the stuff that we really wanted. Right. You know, cedar uh, 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 horizontal surfaces. Yep. Pressure treated everywhere else. Good yep. enough. Nice railing. Uh, and... Uh, structural screws throughout. Yes. Uh, you know, is it overkill? Probably. Don't care. Uh, it's solid. And this I'm is the happy, whole point. You know, because you know. when you build it yourself, now you've earned equity. Oh, right. Exactly. Yeah. You got a, a little bit of a, a place of pride, right? Right. You got all the details the way you want it. Yeah. Exactly. And, and you're not going to sit there staring at something that bothers you for the rest of your life. <laughs> And that's, you paid really good money for someone else to screw up, uh, yeah. uh -huh. right? Because you can be easy on yourself if you choose to be. Yeah. <laughs> you could also say, I'll get that next year. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, and no you know deal. what? There's going to be improvements uh, over time. I don't know what those are yet. I don't know either, uh, because you know, honestly, but, it looks pretty darn good, John. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm thank really you. impressed. We are really, really happy, and, and uh, my wife and I, every morning before the sun comes over the yard arm, we're sitting in the chairs and and just yeah. communing with neighbor uh, with nature. Yep. We have a little uh, chipmunk that comes up and gets fed. He's probably the fattest <laughs> chipmunk in Carlton Place, but anyways, um, and you know. We have all the animals out here, deer and groundhogs and birds and whatever. So we just, we love it. And uh, we can't wait for the uh, awning to come out so we can use it even That'll more. That'll be awesome, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you got a few weeks to get an awning delivered from the hair, and now you've got almost a three season living space. Uh, almost, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you just need a little fire pit or something. <laughs> Somebody's birthday coming? Right? Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, John, let me just recap. You built it yourself, right? You hired out professionals to do the foundation work, yep. which worked out really well. Yep. Very good value for your money. Yes, sir. So you're already way ahead. Now, the average return on investment for a deck like this, what was your material cost? Uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, uh, including the posts, uh, Everything else, all the, we spent a lot of money on screws. You know, yeah. they were. Uh, no. I'm going to say about 6,500 bucks. Material cost yeah. with the the piles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now there's some. Other, sorry, there's some other. You know, there's permit costs that's in there. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, there's the tear down of the old deck. There's the removal of a, a natural gas pipeline that was a so stuff like that. Sure. That kind of part of the cost, but yeah. not really the cost of the deck. So. Sure. And you're not going to get a contractor to come and do this for less than 15. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Guaranteed. Yeah. Now, wow. if we use the, the low end on hiring a contractor, and the return on investment for a project like this is 80 cents on the buck. Oh, wow. It's really high. Yeah. It's better than indoor stuff. Yeah, wow. So you get 80 cents on the dollar, okay, on the, the, the 15 to $18,000 project. Ah, uh, okay, cool. Ah, money invested. Right? Bonus. So that would mean that you actually, uh, you're probably up about five or six right out of the gate yeah yeah and now you get to just enjoy it yeah well again you know not bad that's great news and thank you very much for that I'm you know but again we're retired uh, the next goal will be uh, selling the house with a permitted deck that satisfies everybody's requirements right and gives us a little extra money thank you very much doesn't hurt and we walk away you know uh, they can't argue about it they can't I've that's got it. all the it's permits peace of mind right, right so there. you get exactly. to enjoy it in the meantime exactly. you got a 50-year deck without even thinking about it yeah. and you don't have to touch it again now you've also learned some new skills oh yeah right yeah. So you watch out because I, I have a feeling retirement for you is going to turn into a flipper or something. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, it gives you a little confidence though because the next time you go to buy something, maybe you, you might just say, well, where do you want to be? And then we'll make it into what we want to be. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it was a learning uh, process, absolutely. Um, you and your channel helped out more than you'll ever know. It, it, it's great stuff. You know, there's a bathroom downstairs that needs a little work, so yeah, that might be next. You, fun, you, you, know? you probably will be all right, John. I'm sure you'll be all right. So, but You're a yeah. smart guy. Listen, well. thanks a lot for having us over to, wanted to come and see this. Um, what else can you say? You know, you can DIY your whole life. You can do it yourself, guys, and we can help. So don't be afraid. Grab a project, grab hold with both hands, and uh, become a member like John, and you can email us and send us pictures and get some help. Beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Reality Renovision. If you're new to our channel, then I suggest you subscribe to the channel over here. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications so you'll be told every time a new video comes up. And if you'd like, you can click the link right here and you can binge watch all the episodes that we have on our playlist. Amazing information, everything DIY and decor and renovation and remodeling. Thanks for joining us.